Hello, it's Patrick here from the GarageBandGuide.com. This is GarageBand Q&A, the video series where I do my best to answer your GarageBand questions. If this is your first time here and you want to master GarageBand, improve your music and learn all other kinds of GarageBand related stuff, start now by subscribing and ringing that notification bell so you don't miss a thing. Nancy got in touch via email to ask, how do I fade out at the end of a song? Thanks for that, Nancy. In GarageBand for Mac, there's a couple of ways you can do this, the easiest of which is to head to the Mix tab in the toolbar at the top of your screen and select Create Volume Fadeout on Main Output. This creates a nice smooth fadeout using automation on the master track. You can of course open the master track yourself by heading to the track tab in the toolbar, choosing to show master track, opening automation and placing your own points to create a fade out, but really you're just making life more difficult for yourself by going the DIY route. In GarageBand for iOS, on the track screen, tap the settings icon in the top right of the screen and toggle the fade out switch on. Meredith sent an email to ask, Hi Patrick, I bought your mixing guide and I'm reading it now, but when I click on smart controls for a vocal track, my smart controls in version 10.3.2 do not include a de which would be great to have. How do I access a de in GarageBand if it's not showing up in smart controls? First off, thanks for the great question, Meredith, and I really appreciate you supporting what I'm doing here by picking up my guide to mixing in GarageBand. GarageBand for Mac does include a de but in the form of an audio unit plugin. To access it, first off, make sure you have audio units enabled in the audio tab of GarageBand's settings menu. Then select the track you want to DS and open smart controls for that track by double clicking on the track header. Down here in the plugins area, click on an empty plugin slot. The DSer can be found in the dynamics submenu. Like most of the plugins that come bundled with GarageBand for Mac, the DSer is a stripped back version of the fully featured version found in Logic Pro 10. But the two controls you have access to here will absolutely do the job for you. Lastly, John reached out to ask, how would you advise the best way to stockpile completed GarageBand projects in order to free up space on my iMac? Thanks for getting in touch, John. You have a couple of options here. Storing project files in the cloud is a great way to free up space on your Mac, though I can't really recommend using Apple's own service, iCloud, for this. It's not actually designed to allow you to put a project file in iCloud and then delete it from your device. If you need an actual backup solution, you should consider looking at Google Drive, Dropbox, or OneDrive. They allow you to do the file backups you need and then remove the duplicates from your iMac. Call me old fashioned, but I much prefer to store an active or completed GarageBand project files on an external hard drive. The price of decent one terabyte external drives is dropping all the time and the simplicity of just plugging it into your Mac and then dragging and dropping your files really appeals to me. As a side note, if you're not sure where your GarageBand project files are kept, head to Go in the Finder toolbar at the top of your Mac screen, hold the Alt key to have your library folder appear, click on the Music folder, and the folder GarageBand saves and loads projects into is right there. 
So there you have it. If you have your own garage band question you'd like me to answer on the show, there are a few ways to get it to me. You can leave a comment under this video on Facebook, either via the Garage Band Guide Facebook page or the excellent Garage Band Users Group, and you can also find me on Twitter. Links to all those are in the description below. I've been Patrick from thegaragebandguide.com and I'll see you next time. Bye for now.